Schmidt beer, the brew that grew to be best in the Great Northwest. Your finest craft beer, Rocky. Man to man, smoke Roy Tan. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. And now, here are Greg, Scott, and Dan, coming at you ice cold and unfiltered. That's right, always. Mm -hmm. Welcome in, everybody, the Unfiltered Gentlemen. I am Greg, that is Scott. Oh, yeah. And that is Dan. Boo. (laughs) Oh, sorry. You got me. I'm late for a Halloween. I say Halloween's (laughs) over, man. (laughs) Had a heart attack. (laughs) Thank you guys for listening. Hopefully we haven't scared you off. Uh, thanks for telling friends about the show and spreading the word. Shout out to Washington, D.C. Oh, wow. For being our top listenership last week. Nice. Going East Coast style. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The week before, we were Tupac. Last week, we were Biggie. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of listenership. I see. Yeah. Super white. Uh, so thank you guys <laughs> out in D.C. and everywhere else for listening and telling your friends about the show. Don't forget to hashtag show us your beers when you're posting pictures online and tag us and got some great can art you want to show hashtag cans for cans yeah we love great cans and uh rate and subscribe on itunes apple Podcasts, and everywhere else you get your podcast our burp word of the week which we'll get to uh during our bullpen beer is ancho chilies i guess that's two words but ancho chilies is our burp words of the week wow so uh, good luck with that i guess i gotta start back i've been like waiting for the listeners to you know, jump in there and yeah. use the burp word, and nobody's doing anything. So, Though I've noticed our uh, downloads have gone up. So, have they? Yeah, well, maybe I should <laughs> hold off on that. We're spreading the word. Like, hey, Scott has not been burping in a couple <laughs> weeks. It's safe to enter the water. Oh, man. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, yes, Ancho Chilies. We'll see if Scott can get it. And if not, uh, you guys call in and leave us a voicemail burping our burp word. Ancho Chilies. 805 538 beer is said beer. number. Speaking of beer. I'm uh, feeling pretty dry over here. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for Beer of the Week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend. And I'll say, I think I'll have myself a beer. I will indeed. Uh, this is Pizza Port Brewing's Party Shirt Pale Ale. And I think this might be... Oh, my voice got real high there. <laughs> I think this might be a collaboration with Trader Joe's. Oh. Because uh, if you see the can art, hashtag cans for cans, it looks like a Trader Joe's shirt. And he, yeah, and it's got the uh-huh. Trader Joe's like hibiscus on it. Oh, d- oh, yeah, you're right. It does. So I think it's a TJ's collabo. And they roll with those party shirts. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that's what it's about. Uh, party shirt is a crisp, hot forward pale ale with a carefully crafted hot profile showcasing natural passion fruit, mango, lemon lime and grapefruit notes 5.5 percent has a 3.78 on untapped uh 230 reviews on that and no beer advocate score as of yet hmm. interesting so there you go uh let's see love the can i gotta say that's what i always start with it is a nice can yeah love nice cans that's a nice can it's got a very uh tropical nose to it a little hop on the finish of the nose um Yummy. Let the music swell. I know, right? Ooh, that is good. That is uh, a lot of tropical fruit flavor. Mm -hmm. A lot of nice hop. And not like Ballast Point fruity, but like Mm -hmm. hop fruity. Um, Yeah, it, it... the like like you said, I think the the fruitiness and everything isn't like it's not overwhelming. It's almost like a like a kind of like an IPA kind of taste, mm-hmm. but without all the dank. Yeah, it's yeah. it's uh yeah, that's exactly it. Mm-hmm. And how would you describe the hop <laughs> flavor? Let me tell you, Huel. <laughs> uh, tropical, not overly dank and not piney like an IPA tends to be. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. It, it's. It drinks a lot like an IPA, but it goes down a little smoother. Correct. That's what I have to say. There you go. I don't know. Scott, are you a fan? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was swallowing there. Uh, <laughs> my beer. Yeah, I heard that before. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's good. It does have a pretty dry finish to it. <laughs> uh, not quite brute IPA dry, but we'll find one these days. Yes. One of these days, we'll find a brute IPA. Uh, all right. Let us know. If you've seen this outside of Trader Joe's, let us know because I... Uh, Need to find out if this is a Trader Joe's exclusive or not. Yeah, um, good question. Yeah, so it looks guys, like it is. It seems like it's got to be. Yeah, I should ask my Trader Joe's uh, expert. <laughs> yeah, see, see if she it's can good, uh, detec- clue me in on detective that. work there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the hibiscus. <laughs> uh, all right, 
Good. Let's move on to a little crotch talk. Have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. Uh, I guess it's sort of a grievance. Uh, good and bad. Mm. I just got back uh, last week from a trip to New York. Had to go for that was the worst accent ever. Had to go for a <laughs> <laughs> had to go for a weird yeah, yak. Yeah, I think I just threw up a little. <laughs> had to go to New York. Uh had to go for a wedding and the wedding location was oh, like yeah. out in the middle of nowhere. Uh it's this little town. It's called New Paltz. Uh, it's like three hours north of uh New York City. Is that right? Yeah. Is it by Rochester? I don't know. Okay. I'm I'm no geography expert. Okay. Because I've been there. To Rochester. Yeah. And okay. It's also very tiny. Oh, how, where'd you fly in? Did you fly into Rochester? I think I did, actually. I think they do have a little airport there. Oh, okay. Because I, I flew into JFK. And then, oh, no. Uh, you know what? Maybe I went to Buffalo. Oh. <laughs> Buffalo. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I was there. And uh, how'd you like New York, by the way? I wasn't in like New York, New York. Right. Like, you know, so it was kind of like a little weird city. What time of year was, was it? In. Yeah, it was in February, so it was oh, like yeah. balls cold. Yeah. That's some shrinkage right there. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, oh, let's see. Uh, by car, New Paltz is four and a half hours from Rochester. Oh, okay. So I was nowhere near you. Man, yet. you were even further you, than I was. Yeah, you were uh, northwest of where I was. Oh, okay. Mostly west, a little north. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I was a little uh, closer to the, the ocean, I guess. Good to know. Uh, yeah, it was like 40s, which, you know, for a Californian, it's pretty fucking cold. Yeah, yeah. it's freezing, dude. Uh, the lady friend was in the wedding, and they had to wear, like, their dresses, and it was an outdoor wedding. Oh. <laughs> And the bride had an option to go indoors. They had this very nice space. In fact, I might have chosen to go indoors just for the looks of it because they did this in this awesome uh, old hotel castle thing. It's it's craftsman style, a lot of woodwork, and mm-hmm. it was just gorgeous. And she did it in the garden, which was had great views. But when you when you're there, you don't really see the views, and you certainly won't see them in the pictures. So it just could be any garden, and you may not have had to pay a million dollars for it. You know? Right. Uh, so anyways, that that's my preference. But uh, great views, uh, great looking house um, or castle or whatever it was. Uh, the, yeah, the, the girls froze their ass off during the ceremony. I was sure. obviously able to wear pants and, and a jacket. I wasn't in the ceremony. You had your thermals on in there. Oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> I had it going on. I was uh, keeping warm. With Peed in your wetsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the good thing about this wedding. The groom, Irish. Oh, mm. yeah. So you know what that entails. Oh, yeah. Like we got there and uh, that night did a little dinner with them and lots of booze. And then the next night was uh, like the rehearsal dinner where it was at an Irish pub mm-hmm. where we just ate an open bar. And then the next day was the wedding where they had an open bar at the reception. Oh, man. That's how you do it. Yeah. And they had buses like to and from the rehearsal oh, dinner man. and to and from the wedding and the, and the reception and everything. Oh, cool, man. And so all the Irish people on the buses were just smuggling beers, too. So we were drinking <laughs> on the way to everything. So look, of all the weddings I've been to, certainly not the worst because of that. Uh, it was expensive as fuck. It was in the middle of nowhere. So like the Hampton Inn was like $300 a night or whatever. It was insane. And uh, so that part of it was not so good. But the, the booze part was good. It was hilarious because uh, the Irish people, I was talking to one of the girls one day, and she was talking about how their their time is off because they're like nine hours ahead or wherever in Ireland. And she, in her great Irish accent, was talking about how like, she gets up early here. And it was like, you know, 5.30 a.m. So she went down, got some of the free breakfast at the hotel, and then like went back to bed and got back up at like 10 a.m. to catch the end of breakfast. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, what'd you get down there? She, I shit you not. They were... Eating Lucky Charms. Get <laughs> out of here. Why? <laughs> and it's even better hearing her saying it in an Irish accent. You know, like, a, oh, we had the Lucky Charms, you know, whatever. <laughs> oh I, I am not a king of accents. Uh, she, p- please tell me she didn't say they're magically delicious. Oh, I wish. Oh, <laughs> so good. apparently Lucky Charms in Ireland are a bit of a commodity because it's like $12 a box. Whoa. So they just don't buy it because it's too fucking expensive. Is that right? So wow. they had the little boxes then at breakfast. So she'd eat one and then like hoard two and take them back <laughs> up. So she was stashing Lucky Charm boxes in her luggage and was going <laughs> to take them with her. And like they're going to go on a rest of like another part of the trip after the wedding and then go back to Ireland. She was looking forward to like selling them to her friends and shit. Oh, that stale Lucky Ooh. Charms at that point? <laughs> well, they're in, you know, they're in a box still. Oh, okay. But, oh my God, it was hilarious. And she was so excited to be eating all these Lucky Charms. And, <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. And then I like I was talking to her husband. I was like, so you, you guys really into these Lucky Charms or is she just fucking with me? Because this is way too good. He's like, 
oh no man they're gray i was like oh my wow, god that's crazy oh <laughs> uh, nothing better than people with an irish accent saying that they love lucky charms that's funny yeah I was it's like, great this should be racist or something yeah i don't know it's interesting too that you know it's uh they're, they're, they i'm sure they're perfectly aware of the stereotype and they're like oh, oh yeah. fuck it it's too good yeah how could you not be yeah we take take that for granted yeah. I'm going to go get some tomorrow. Yeah, you should. <laughs> you get real baked and have some lucky charms. So, uh, yeah, there was that. Uh, oh, and I, I happened across this little tiny brewery called Arrowwood Farms Brewing. Mm. And they had a little like outpost in the city that we were staying in. And good God, were they delicious. I was like, you know, mm. they weren't magically delicious. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you, know you don't always have the highest of expectations when you're in a little tiny city that has a whole lot of nothing. And we walked in and they literally had eight beers on the on the board and i said hey do you guys do flights he goes yeah i said how many four he goes yep i said two flights Dang. all right I'll take them all and uh had one of each and their ipas were really good uh everything they did was good um one of the the eight was a um a cider unfortunately but they didn't make it just part of their thing um so anyways if you're if you're in new york and you get your hands on airwood farms brewing really good so they grow their own hops like they're just a they're a farm out in the middle oh, of the wow. they grow their own hops and uh, they also do some of their own food as well. So it was really, really cool. Good for them. Yeah. And then we asked them, there's another brewery in town. We're like, hey, what do you think of the other place? Because a lot of times breweries are are nice. And he goes, hey, man, I used to really like them. They used to be my favorite. He goes, honestly, they kind of suck now. Like they started using like lesser ingredients and just hmm. got a new brewer. And he goes, it's not really good anymore. Oh, I wonder how much of that is true now. Well, we went. <laughs> oh, there you go. It was not good. Oh. Really? Yeah. It was kind of like a, a small town version of BJ's where they had like food and, and you know, brew pub oh, thing going. okay. But the beer was not very good. Like, was it was food. We didn't have any. Oh. We, we didn't have a whole lot of time. We had to go to rehearsal dinner oh, that night. Okay. So we were just getting drunk before we got drunk. And uh, whew, that was, it was, I forget what it was called. It was like otter or something or sea, sea lion or otter. I forget. Oh, some, okay. some sea creature. But uh, <laughs> boy, was that not very good. Oh, man. It was, it was a letdown after having such good beer. So, um, that was my New York trip. Nice. Just a quick question. Yeah. Uh, actually, I got two questions, but the first one is for you. Good night, everybody. Yes. <laughs> um, so, she's stashing these Lucky Charms, like, hiding them to take them home. Mm-hmm. Now, did her husband, like, sneak in and try to take some, and then she walks and say, oh, I always after me Lucky Charms. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, God. We okay. Should, we should get their numbers and call them. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't think people are going to believe me when I say that the Irish people fucking love Lucky Charms. That's that crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's almost too perfect. It is. Yeah. I, I, maybe, that's, maybe that's where they got the little Lucky Charm going. I get I lost my shit when they told me that. I was like, <laughs> you're, you're fucking with me, aren't you? That's like, good stuff, No, we man. swear. What's so funny? I was like, what do you mean what's so funny? It is good. I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, come on. Who yeah, doesn't no love kidding. Lucky Charms? Just sugar. That's right. Yeah. Speaking of weddings, uh-huh. I, at my... Old age, uh-huh. I be able to like you know not go to a lot of things that old people have to go to. Okay, one of them being a wake. Oh, speaking so, of weddings, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're, speaking they're of kinda, weddings, someone died. They're, they're <laughs> kind of the same weddings, funerals. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, so it just, any of you guys have any wake experience? Mm. Yeah, I I mean I've been to funerals. Well, let me just. Is uh, it different? I here's uh, let me just. I don't think it was the wake was the problem. It's just I don't listen when my wife a lot of times is uh-huh. explaining things to me. I can believe that. Yeah. And so what happened was she started off at the beginning of the week where she said, I'm going to, um, there's a birthday party in the valley on Thursday night and I'm going to stay down there and then go to a wake the next morning. Like, okay, fine. Sure. And then the change somewhere during the week is, oh, I'm not staying. Actually, I'm going with my daughter to the wake. We're going to get up early the next morning. Uh, it's Friday morning is when the, when the wake was. Okay. And then I was off on Friday, and then she realized that I was off. She goes, oh, I realize you're off on Friday, so you can take me to the wake. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Man. which I don't, you know, whatever, I don't care. I, I'd either be doing that or working, Ubering or whatever. So I'm like, yeah, sure. But I've never, I don't think, been to a wake. And it was just, to me, it was kind of weird because... Um, first of all, you have to drive to Orange County, which is you know an hour and a half Awful. drive. Yeah, you know, land your plane on the freeway. Exactly. Yeah, and then <laughs> and I still wasn't sure where I was going. So we get to these people's house, we eat a little bit of breakfast, and then I get in the car. It's me and my wife and three other women. And there's one thing I hate is like a lot of times she's like, "Oh, um, I'm going out with my friends such and such a night. You want to go?" And I, I'm always like, "Oh, wait a minute. Who are your friends?" And it's like. <laughs> Four other women or whatever. Give this man a beer. <laughs> yeah, please. And I'm like, no, I don't want to go with you and your lady friends on your woman's night out. Mm-hmm. But thanks for asking. Right. 
So then I'm a little pissed because I'm thinking, this is what this is. It's her and her friends, and now I'm stuck in the middle with all these women. So then we <laughs> when they're giving Trust me, okay, they don't want to be stuck with you. Yeah, I'm sure they <laughs> yeah. don't. Cause, you know, after I farted a couple of yeah. times, they were like, please let us out. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so, you know, we they're turn left, turn right, and we got to where they were going, oh, this is a funeral home. Okay. It's, oh, yeah. She said something about a wake. <laughs> So I guess that's where I'm at. But to me, it was kind of weird because I've never, you know, been to a wake. I figured, you know, the next funeral I go to would be mine, which would be, right. you know, not, you know, it's still not, waiting. Yeah, it's any t- any day now. <laughs> but it just kind of seemed weird because you know you walk in the room and there's the dead guy laying there in his little box. That is weird. And <laughs> yeah. And then the you know off the side room there's all the kinds of you know food, can- cookies, candies, and all kinds of stuff. So I just I don't know. It's kind of weird to me. But maybe it's that's a normal thing for a wake. I don't know. The only one I don't know if it's a wake. If you, I don't know the difference. The only one I've ever been to that's had like the open casket was a friend from high school who, and this freaked me the hell out. He had shot himself. Oh yeah. And then they had an open casket, and I was, and they were like, "Hey, do you want to go see him?" I was like, "Ah, uh, not not really." He shot himself in the head, and I was like, "Uh, I don't oh, think shit. I do." And they're yeah. like, "No, no, it's fine. Like you can't see anything." I was like, "Are you sh-? like I don't need to see what he did to himself." Like I fully aware i can visualize it and uh they, they did an amazing job of cleaning him up he looked like a normal person just dead and uh so i went up and saw him and it was super weird the whole thing to me of like viewing the body is a little weird but right? weirder than yeah. that is having food right next to the dead body that's, yeah that's kind of uh, weird i've been to like, funerals is this have... his lower part or <laughs> <laughs> i don't even, i don't even know what he died from yeah i mean i asked him and he didn't say nothing <laughs> so i was like god, oh god. hopefully it wasn't like tb or something yeah, yeah. i don't know i, I bit in the food room, there's a lot of Reese's peanut butter cups, which is my favorite. So I just went over and just started just eating Reese's peanut butter there cups. You go. Oh, was yeah. there beer? No beer. No. Oh, yeah. I'd have left. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've had <laughs> food yeah. at funerals like afterwards, like they do the, the funeral. Yeah, I've done and that. Like, I would come over for light refreshments and whatever. Yeah. And I don't know. And I'm, I don't just don't go to funerals ever. Yeah, they're not super fun. No. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, even like I've had co workers that were, you know, were good friends of mine and they, you know, passed and I didn't just don't want to go. I don't know. Yeah. But, so it just yeah. doesn't do anything for me for the most part. And, you know, my wife's the kind of person that she'll go to all that, you know, kind of stuff. Right. So I, I let her go and represent the family. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like, I had uh, one experience where I was like maybe 16 or 17 or something like that. I was still in high school. And it was a good friend of mine at the time, like her uh, grandmother passed away. Okay. And like we were all friends and like it was me and like a couple other friends that we all went and we're sitting right next to her. And like, I don't know why. One of my friends was like goofing around and she would always do this thing with her hand like this like which meant at the time as we understood it you know was chinga tu madre (laughs) and uh (laughs) I don't know, and she kept like, and what it is, he kind of looked like a paw or something. I don't know, I can't really explain yeah, it. Yeah, he's like folding his fingers inward, yeah. it kind of looks like and, a weird paw. And, and she would show it to me, like, hey, Daniel, I'm like, what? And she's showing me, I'm like, stop, stop, like, <laughs> that. like it's not even funny, like, what are you fucking around for? Like, she's fucking dead, and she's right there. Right. And like, she just keeps doing it, and like, like just putting it on the table, oh, and no. people walking by, and going like this, and like, <laughs> I couldn't help it, and I just started laughing, and like, it was like the worst case of like, should not be laughing right now, Right. and everyone Everyone else, like when someone else started laughing, I was laughing harder, and like <laughs> and, and it was to a point where I was like tears in my oh, eyes. Like no. so, people thought I was crying over this grandmother I never even knew. <laughs> and uh, you're a sensitive guy, yeah. And I was like red in the face, like laughing so fucking hard. And then like, we came out of there laughing, and it was like that had to be so disrespectful. Like I was, who the fuck are those kids cracking up? Like right. those little <laughs> shits. It was awful. Oh man, that's. <laughs> It was hilarious. But nobody else knew what the little hand thing meant, right? I don't like, think that's so. Kind of like an inside. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Like, like the the daughter of the grandma wasn't over there. Like, oh, those fucking no. shits. You know? No, like you're flipping each other. Yeah, off. and that's what I thought was really bad about it. Was chinga tu madre? It's like somebody's mother is dead over there, <laughs> right? dude. Like, you gotta stop. And I was dying. I was, oh, they almost killed me in that place, man. That's, it was terrible. That's awful. Oh man. Yeah. Oh, geez. Well, any grievances? <laughs> <laughs> On that note, <laughs> I guess I do. Um, you know, I, I, it's about your friend who kept no, saying no, things too much. No. Right? Um, it, it's about like you know. You, you, so I like to go to a bar, you know, to watch a game or something. You here, know, here. like you know, and I you know, I don't got cable, so I kind of have to go there to watch like Lakers or you know oh, Dodgers right. sometimes and stuff. So I'll go, and um, I don't mind kind of having banter with people I don't know. 
You know sure. what I mean? Like that's cool to a level like, hey, you know, right. you know, let's what's your take on the game or what's your take on the you know, the food, the beer, whatever. You know what I mean? I heard you're killing the booze like at fantasy football. Exactly. That kind exactly. Of <laughs> oh wow, well, I am and you know, but I yeah. Am the but, champ. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, you always want to watch out for the annoying guy. And, oh uh, yeah. The annoying guy. And everyone you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Found him. No. <laughs> I just wonder why everybody's looking at me. <laughs> you, you'll know who the annoying guy is, and if you don't know, you, you'll find him because he always asks, and, and tell me if this pisses you off or not, but the question I always get is, so what do you do? It's the, oh, so what yeah. do you do guy? It's the, yeah, I want to talk yeah. to you, but I don't have anything to talk about. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, no, dude. Like, I don't want to, I came here to forget about my job. <laughs> like, you know, and it's like. If I liked my job, I wouldn't drink so much. Exactly. Like, I don't know. Like, you, you got to understand that too. I think I, and I feel like it's kind of a thing that you ask somebody when you get to know them already. It's not something like out of nowhere. You just ask people what they do. Right. And like, I have some I funny stories about my job, but like my, my job from the outside just right. seems extremely boring. Mine too. So if I just say what I do, they're like, oh, there's no follow up question. There's nothing. Yeah. And I don't want a follow up question. I don't want to talk about it. And, you know, and then they. Yeah, yeah. I'd be talking to you if I wanted to talk. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, I don't know. I kind of feel like that's just something that kind of grinded my gears a little bit. <laughs> just, I hate that question. Why can't it ever be the hot girls that are like, hey, so what do you do? I know. I'm like, well, let me tell you. I know. It's always Go. some fat guy. I know. Short, too. <laughs> yeah. With like a high pitched voice. Yeah. Oh, God. It's that's like, awful. Fuck the, well, so what do you do, guy? So which game was this for? Uh, oh, I mean, it's just like like the Lakers. Just, like, oh, to go yeah. watch them. Like mm-hmm. I've been watching just and it's just randomly. Like it, I always know it's that fucking guy. He's just right. like leave me alone and like anything but the game that I'm watching. Do you get network? So can you get like the national games? Sometimes, yeah. Like, like over, I'll get, over like, the air, or TNT whatever. or like ESPN. But the uh, the ca- deep cable you can't deep get cable like Lakers <laughs> Channel and Dodgers. Yeah, channel, Lakers Channel. Yeah, you got to go out for those games, man. Back in the days, man, that was the best when Lakers were on KCAL 9. Right? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I was thinking about that. You know, you get that shit over the air. Yeah. You need cable. I was thinking Lakers on KCAL 9 or NBA on NBC Music. One of those, I hear it, and it just brings me back to being a little yeah. kid watching basketball. Yeah, Chick used to be on KCAL. Exactly. That's why I think I like that one better. Probably. <laughs> chicken stew. Yeah. <laughs> Not chicken stew, but chick and stew. Mm. <clears throat> All right. We have an uh, old, uh, old time of the week, of course. We have an Integran drunk story. Uh, listener email with a booze hack, some booze news, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, old timey word of the week, wet sock. Wet sock apparently is a limp handshake. <laughs> yeah. God. He gave him the wet sock. You know, the annoying at the bar, the annoying guy at the bar gave you the wet sock. Right. Yeah. I think the only thing more annoying than that is the strong handshake, like the too strong handshake. Oh, the, I'm going to show you how fucking, manly I am. Yeah, <laughs> fuck you too, guy. Yeah, yeah. I do hate the wet sock. Like when you go in, and yeah, you know, oh, they I hate give you, that. Especially when it's another guy. That's yeah. disappointing. It's like, come on, bro. It's like you're in for just like hold your hand out, and you're like, yeah. Dude, am I supposed to kiss this? Like you're, what? You're in for quite the dry spell, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I'm always impressed when a female comes back with a nice handshake. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, like, I don't, I also don't want her to crush my hand and make Correct. me feel like a child. <laughs> right. That's not a turn on. Yeah. But, like, when she comes back with, like, a solid handshake, it's like, yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that out of anybody. Yeah. yeah. And the reason why you don't like the crushing handshake is because you're not expecting it. Like, if it was no. expected to crush the other guy's hand, then you got a level playing field. But if I'm coming out with a strong handshake and you're expecting to crush my hand, of course you're going to crush my hand and right. make me look weak. Not you ready asshole. for this. Exactly. It'd be one thing if like you and your friend have this thing going where yes. you always try to out crush each other's hands yeah, or like something. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Dylan from Predator. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> what about the handshake where the guy doesn't want to let go of your hand? Oh, I hate awkward. that too. I mean, you're like, look, look, give like, me my hand. Yeah. Or they put their hand on top of your hand. Oh, oh. 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 Have you ever had that? No, I don't think so. Oh, yeah. So. You go in for the yeah. shake, and then they put their hand on top of the shake. Oh, man. As they shake. And it's like, are you dominating my hand? Like, what? what is this? Hey, you need to put your hand on top now, too. Yeah, and then it becomes that game where you're just moving your hands yeah. on top. And, and you put the feet on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, since we're on the subject, Uh-oh. somebody mentioned this the other day, and I agree 100%. What's with the hugs now? Oh, where guys, you know, they come and do the guy hug now. I do lots of hugging. Um, I guess, man, let's just back to hand, shaking hands. Yeah, yeah. what? Yeah. I can go either way. The weird well, one is that's uh, your personal business. Yeah, <laughs> the worst, worse than hug or handshake is when they can't make up their mind. <laughs> the, oh, the, yeah. The lady's friend, the lady friend's dad is that guy. Like he starts going for a handshake. So like, all right, we're handshaking it, and then he kind of like mid 
mid reach kind of puts his other arm out it's like whoa 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 what do we do are we shaking are we hugging right and then it becomes like the awkward like shake and pull in and bro (laughs) hug thing and it's oh god i hate it that's interesting yeah so now if i want to deflect i just go for the hug so it's not an awkward thing but though one time after like two shakes in a row where he like fucked it up and like almost hugged i just went for the hug because like i'm tired of this stupid game right and then he finally went for a real shake I was like, I'm, I give up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's interesting that you mentioned that. Like, I feel like my mom's side, like, the everyone's very warm, and you do get the handshake hug. Mm-hmm. And, like, I one time fucked it up with my, my grandpa on my dad's side because I went to, I would, you'd always want a handshake. And then one time I accidentally handshook and was going to hug him, and he looked at me like, get off me, you fruitcake. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, so I get what you're talking about. Like, you know, there's some people, it's like, get off me. What's wrong with you, yeah, weirdo? Yeah. yeah I, I'm, I, it doesn't bother me. Mm. As long as I, I don't like the hug from guys who I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. a little weird. That is that's weird. The worst. It's a little weird. But uh, yeah, I'm all for a hug. And then I have this one co worker at one of my jobs where I mean, he's Hispanic and I'm white. And, Either he's going to shake my hand, he's going to high-five me, or fist bump, and I never know what he's going to do. Sure. So it ends up being like some stupid, awkward thing. I keep telling him we have the widest handshake in the world, because <laughs> it's like he comes up with his fist, and I hold my hand out like this, and it's just like really awkward. It's like, <laughs> Looks like you're trying you just, to... I'm like, just stop, because yeah. we have the widest handshake in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like you're trying to give him a double dutch. And, yeah, oh, God, God, man. It's all downhill yeah. from there. Dutch rudders. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I don't know. Uh, hopefully... Our next person has a good handshake. <laughs> no one could blame you for bed swerving. It's time for Beer Babe of the Week. Indeed. And her name is Ava. And you can shake hands with her on Instagram. She's got great hands. At uh, She Knows Beer. No spaces, no dots, no dashes. Nice. Yeah. I'll oh, shake she, her hand on that. Yeah. She <laughs> Knows Beer. Uh, she's drinking a great notion brewing something dark there uh, just in time for the winter to get cool Anyways, nice glass she got there it is a nice glass yep. nice glass indeed uh, so make sure you're following her and insta shaking her hand if that's a thing at she knows beer uh, <laughs> insta <laughs> trying to work that in somehow <laughs> probably sounds creepier than i realize it does a little bit uh shit all right uh we have a listener email we got a uh, drunk story from integrant of course we have bullpen beer to get to very quickly so uh let's start off with a listener email this is actually a hack of the week quizco queries we have absolute answers we're here to solve your common conundrums with hack of the week All right, let's get fancy. Uh, The subject is booze hacks. Hey, guys, if I'm being honest, I miss some of the segments you haven't done in a long time. One of my favorites was the booze hacks. So in that vein, here's one to get you started. Keep sparkling wine bubbly by placing an upside-down spoon in the bottle. So if you pour, like you open up a thing of champagne, pour yourself a glass and you want it to stay bubbly, take a spoon, put the handle in the bottle. Oh... Uh, apparently, placing the handle of a spoon in an open bottle of champagne helps keep it fizzy. Now, I'm no scientist, but supposedly the metal from the spoon cools the air inside the bottle, which prevents the bubbles from escaping. I actually tried it over a few hours, and it definitely helped. I hope this helps bring back the hack of the week. Cheers, guys, from Fiona. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, well, we're going to have to get some champagne. Yeah. Indeed. I wonder if it has to do, too, with just putting something in the bottle where it, like, you know, closes up the bottleneck to the to the opening. Oh, it just kind of prevents air from flowing? Yeah, just, yeah. like, something clogging up that whole portion of it, because I never thought about that. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be a, a seal on it. And right. And you, you can get, like, the little cork stopper things that Correct. would yeah. seal it. So, mm-hmm. so it's I, not quite a seal. Quite, you know, said spoon, I mean... I, you, you can't use a fork. Yeah, right? that, was, that was very spoon. specific. Yeah. I wonder if it yeah. matters. Like, do you just need the handle of a utensil, or does it matter? Does mm. it have to be a spoon? Big spoon, little spoon, teaspoon? What do we do here? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Fiona, don't leave we, us uh, hanging. We, yeah. we need more information. Yes, we do. Please email us. And try us a fork info. and see if the fork works, too. Yeah. And then stick in the... To- oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't stick in the toaster. Uh, yeah, let us let us know if you have any more science about that. Cause, yeah. Uh, now I'm perplexed. And okay, fine. I will try and find more <laughs> yeah, booze I, hacks for we you. We haven't had any hacks for a while. It has been a while. Yeah. The only mm-hmm. hacks on this show are us. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Had to go there. Bada bing. Yeah, there we go. Uh, all right. I have a very quick Tales from Uber that uh, you guys might enjoy, and I'd like to get Scott's take on this one. Okay. Does your cabbie make you queasy? <gasps> it's Tales from Uber. So we Ubered home from the airport after a New York trip uh, the other or a couple weeks ago, whatever it was. And as we're waiting for our Uber, there were just, you know, it's LAX. There's a shit ton of Ubers and Lyfts driving up and all that stuff. And some of them are weirder than others. And one of them got out and I didn't see this happen. The lady friend brought it to my attention as it was happening. He got out with like this bag of something, like a Ziploc bag of something. And she goes, she's like, hit me. She's like, look, look, look. And I look over and it's like this yellowish brown liquid. I said, what the fuck is that? She goes, I'm pretty sure he's pissing into a Ziploc bag and now dumping his urine. Oh. Yeah. Like he's just driving so much he can't stop for a bathroom break. You think that's what it is or is it like a colostomy bag? I mean, it could be a colostomy bag, but I think that maybe you should be at home. Probably. Yeah, I don't know. But why empty it right there in front of everybody? He didn't like empty. He just kind of took it over the trash can, dumped it in the trash like oh. dumped the whole bag, like just threw it in the trash can. Ziploc bag. It was an Uber driver? Or Lyft. I don't know which Whatever, one. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You know any fellow drivers that are- they're filling up the bags. Oh, I just pissed myself. <laughs> yeah, I don't right. Know about oh, the damn. bags. Yeah, the car smells like it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I really hope that's not what it was, but I that's I don't weird. know what else that colored liquid would have been inside of a clear plastic was bag. Was he an elderly gentleman? Yeah, I mean, not like super elderly. No, not older, my age. No older than Scott. Oh man. Okay. Huh. So I guess he was elderly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's it was interesting. It was super weird. Pretty gross. Yeah. yeah. Glad he wasn't our driver. Definitely gross. Yeah. I looked down at my phone. I was like, nope, still four minutes away. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank And then God. did anybody get in the car with him after that? Yeah. Oh. Well, actually, the person had already gotten in the car. He got out. Oh, and he's okay. like, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Yeah. I'm going to go take a piss. Fuck out no, of here. Don't mind me. I'll be pissing on the freeway. <laughs> Super weird. That gross, is dude. weird. Let's hope it wasn't that. Don't know what it would have been, but let's hope. Uh, all right. We have a... Uh, Bullpen beer to get to. That was hard to say for some reason. So let's let's start drinking some beer. He calls to the bullpen for beer. Yes, he does. Sorry, I was a little behind on passing this out. <laughs> I realized our drunk story was not properly loaded into the playback machine, so we had to go beer instead, which is never wrong with with that uh so we are drinking we you know we talked about it last show we needed to have something big and boozy on this one so we're drinking campanology brewings for whom that's what's called for whom it's an imperial stout 10 percent, 3.71 on untapped a 3.92 on beer advocate very respectable there it's an imperial mexican stout with ancho chilies and cocoa oh. nibs and some cinnamon cocoa nibs i have not tried this i just it reminded me of a uh, sound like a choco vesa. Yeah. So I thought, you know, it is the season. Tis the season. Tis the season for choco vesa. Oh, We're yeah. in November. Yeah. So I thought it was time to uh, start looking for the choco vesa or mm-hmm. its replacements, as it were. Uh, I guess technically, you know, this is Campanology, which is always nice and cheap. This is three ninety nine for a big old bomber of it. Uh-huh. So uh, I guess what we're really doing is. <laughs> Pockets like you know this Boozing Budget beer on tap It's hopeless We all sober Beer so fly Can't buy You know this Boozing Hops and malts Oh my Stay focused Boozing on a budget This isn't half bad I don't know about you guys uh, Lots of chocolate a little bit of cinnamon there. Very boozy. Very boozy. Yeah. Uh, I'm always afraid when beers have chilies in them because like Choco Vesa has a little bit of spice to it. I'm always afraid it's going to be like a spicy beer. Not because I don't like spicy, but I don't like spicy beers. Hmm. Um, I think one of the worst beers I've ever had, besides Dark and Stormy, was the uh, Ballast Point Habanero Sculpin. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, God, that was garbage. And that's not even because I hate on Ballast Point. That's just garbage. It was undrinkable. I think I only drank half of it. Um... This isn't bad. It's not as good as Choco Vesa, let's be honest. Correct. But then again, what is? <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah. Um, lots of chocolate, a little bit of spice coming through, some definite warmth from the booziness. Mm-hmm. Um, cinnamon kind of gets lost from the chili, I think, but you can kind of tell it's in there. What do you guys think? 
Yeah, I, I don't know how much of that is the chili and how much of it, like you said, is maybe a little cinnamon kind of taste that's like get me a little bit of that spiciness. Yeah. Yeah, but um, it's there and definitely chocolate. Definitely chocolate. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not bad. No, yeah, correct. It's not at all. It's very okay. drinkable. Yeah. I would almost say it's a, it's it, it is sweet, mm-hmm. but the booziness really balances it out. It does help clean it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't sit on your tongue too long. That's right. Um, if I had to give it... Uh, some negative points. Mouthfeel. It's a little thin. When I have a 10 percenter, I feel like I, I have a little body to my beer. Okay. I don't know. I could be wrong. I drink a little. Yeah. And if you're a little low on cash. You know, no, it's not a bad yeah, beer. It's, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. pick one up. Yeah, You, you got eight bucks up. and you're trying to get hammered? Yeah. Get there two of go. these babies. There you go. Yeah. Uh-huh. Two 10 percenters. Uh, yeah, so camp analogies. Yeah, it was good. For whom? Imperial uh, Mexican sound there. All right. Very nice. Uh, we'll move on. We, like I said, we're at Integrin's Oktoberfest back in early October. Recorded some people telling us their favorite drunk stories. Last week we played the first one, and uh, guy went to the the fake hotel and the real hotel. <laughs> and this week we have a new one, and here we go. So I was in the Navy. I had this good friend named Reddish. He was this kind of guy who'd always egg you on to do anything you never wanted to do. So I was at this party. We had a Mexican-themed party. There was a bo- g- huge bottle of sangria there. I started drinking it, and he comes up to me, and he goes, Hey, there's no way you can drink all that. And I tell him, Whoa, wait, that's not fair. Someone else already drank some of it, just trying to get out of the, you know, the dare he's trying to do me. Someone else already drank part of it, so it's not fair. You know, that's not me drinking the whole gallon of sangria. So he goes, "Whatever, you suck." Next week, we go to another part Navy party. I show up with a giant gallon of sangria, hugging it like it's a baby, going to this party. I, I figure, all right, I can pace myself through the party. You know, it's not that much if you think about it over six or seven hours. I start chugging, 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 and then the plan goes awry because I chug too fast, and I am out of it. I am long gone, and I want to go sit on the couch. So I set the bottle down. I go to lean back on the couch, and in the back of my head hits like a hard surface of a table, and I am bleeding out of the back of my head, but I don't feel it. And then everyone else at the party goes like, Whoa, are you all right, man? Hey, are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. So I go to the bathroom. They rip someone's shirt off and tie it around my head like a bandana to stop the bleeding. And then I carry my what's left of the sangria with me, continue it. Eventually, I finish the whole thing. I go back to Reddish's house to gloat while I'm totally wasted. And I am running the bottle of empty bottle of sangria against some bars and going hey reddish i finish and then everyone else in the house is going shut the hell up reddish isn't even here so i couldn't even glow that's my drug story i think he'd had a few by the time he told that story too <laughs> yeah no kidding <laughs> oh good time so you guys- all that and the guy wasn't even there i know I was waiting for like I was running the glass against the railing and then like it shattered and like, cut my hand <laughs> yeah. open or something. Yeah. So then my neck and then my hands bleeding. And yeah, then yeah. I ripped off more shirts and <laughs> was trying to tie him out, you know, whatever. But well, uh, and I thought he was going to make him try to drink it. Like, hey, I got this, you motherfucker. Why don't you drink it, <laughs> yeah. you fucking clown? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, why did he put himself through that punishment? I don't know. He ducked out of it. He's like, hey, there's not enough here for me to do it. Right. <laughs> he got out of it. Why do you have to go? I'm going to go find yeah, one now. I mean, and what a man he was. That's right. That's I gotta true. find those Navy parties. I guess so. Yeah. Drinking gallons of sangria. Whew. Good Lord. luck, man. Anyways, you guys have a drunk story to tell. You can send it Absolutely. to us uh, at the unfiltered gentleman at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail, 805-538-BEER. Beer. It's 2337. All right, let's, uh, let's do the important work here. Let's move on to some news. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. Yes, it is, and uh, I'm sure you guys will all be sad by this, but Constellation's 
uh, CEO Rob Sands will be stepping down next year. Wow. Oh, it's a shame. Constellation, of course, owns such breweries as Ballast Point and mm. Modelo and whatnot. So, wow. come on, Rob. Yeah, he's going to stay on the board, though. So he's like, I still want a paycheck, right? Mm-hmm. Smart. And Constellation Brands is seeking three billion dollars as they try to sell off their U.S. wine brands. I guess they have some wines they don't want to deal with anymore. Mm. Three billion dollars. Fuck the low, low price. <laughs> so I think one of them is Arbor Mist. It's like it's all crappy, like. American shit wine. Uh, yeah. Uh, Rogue Ales president Brett Joyce is going to be stepped down. I'm sure we've all had and enjoyed some Rogue Ales. Yes. He's going to be stepping down to kind of spend more time with family and such. So hopefully uh, Rogue continues to do good stuff. Um, I like this one. Maryland Comptroller. That's always a weird word for me. Right. Comptroller. Comptroller. Uh, is accusing Anheuser Busch of promoting binge drinking among college students. After they released a specialty pack of natural light, 77 pack. Oh, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> For the low, low price of. $30. Wow. Oh. $30 for a 77 pack of natural light. Oh. Where can you get one of those? Uh, apparently in Maryland. Wow, that's a long trip. And it was only being marketed in college towns. Oh, yeah? So that I, is funny. Yeah, I think he's got a case. Yeah. <laughs> 77 pack only marketed in college towns. Yeah. yeah, he's probably trying to promote binge drinking. A little bit. I would say. It's a good game of beer pong right there. Man. 77. You got to know your demographic. That's for sure. But Maryland, like, don't they have money in Maryland? Uh... I want to go somewhere uh, less affluent. Affluent. I guess there's some parts of Maryland aren't so great. I don't know. It's true. Isn't Baltimore there? Yeah. Yeah. I hear that's a little dicey. Piece of crap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the man, the Ravens. Yeah. I don't know anything about the East Coast, <laughs> but uh, sure, why not? Uh, and then finally, there was a study done to find out who were the booziest cities in Ooh. America. And Scott's house does not qualify as a city. <laughs> oh. Darn it. <laughs> uh, does anybody want to take any cracks? As the booziest? Yeah, as the booziest. What defines boozy? Uh, annual spending on alcohol. Oh, shit. Mm. Probably uh, San Diego. Winner, winner. Really? Oh, oh nice. yeah. yeah. Dan wins. Number one, San Diego. Boom. Here's the list. Starting at number 10, Washington, D.C., $662. Uh, St. Louis, 684 Baltimore, 724 Minneapolis, St. Paul, 754 mm-hmm. Denver, 771 mm. Anchorage, Alaska. You got to be drunk to live there. <laughs> 788 Boston, Boston, and 23 San Francisco, 875 Number two, Seattle, 986 Wow. San Diego, 1112 Bang. Annual nice. uh, spending on alcohol. I see that. I'm like, oh, only 1100 huh? <laughs> yeah, I remember that story we did about, uh, wasn't it uh, San Diego's like biggest like uh, producer oh, yeah. for like a- revenue? The breweries were making like over a billion dollars yeah, a year just in taxes like, or something like that. Yeah, so I did the math there. I'm like, that's got to be the winner. Yeah, and it was. I was smart thinking mm-hmm. there. Way to go, San Diego. Yeah. yeah. I knew I liked you for a reason. <laughs> oh, show. Sure. Yes. So. Finally, they got some uh, winner down there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Definitely not their sports. <laughs> I was going to say teams. Sport it gets team. down to one. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> You're right. It's only one. Rubbing salt in that wound. Yikes. Nobody wants the Chargers, though. No. Or the Clippers. Oh, man. Yeah, no city wants the Chargers. <laughs> like, all the owners are ready to kill Spanos. and <laughs> makes me giggle every day. Uh, all right. Enough about that. I think that's everything. I think it's time for us to go find ourselves some more beer. I'm parched. You know, mm-hmm. two beers deep. Uh, thank you guys for listening and telling friends. The unfilteredgentleman.com is where you find us at the unfiltered gentleman on social media except for twitter at unfiltered gents leave us uh, your favorite drunk stories 805-538-BEER-2337 or maybe you just need to call somebody because you're drunk and need to like share and, and we're not your ex we won't judge that's get, right get as drunk as you want and call yeah. us uh what else find us on all your favorite podcast apps and uh keep telling your friends on how to find us and all that good stuff i think that's everything i'm sure i forgot something thanks for listening make sure you're out there staying hydrated and on that note good night everybody (laughs) 